I'm Özgen. And I'm Daniel. And welcome to Art Talks for Beginners. If you're wondering whether a painting is by Tiziano or Tintoretto, then you're in the right place. Welcome. Welcome. In this episode, we have a little bit of a different painting. A winter painting. Yes. Some cool air. Yes, it's going to be exciting to review this one. Yeah, hopefully not traumatic. I always get nervous. <laughs> no, it's right. not going to be. This is actually one of my favorite paintings. A positive That's why painting. I chose. Okay. So tell us, Daniel, what you see in the painting. I'll, I'll walk through. So it looks like we're in a small village or a town somewhere. It's obviously winter because mm -hmm. there is snow everywhere. The trees are without leaves, so we can tell that it's a winter scene. In the foreground, it looks like we have a hunting pack, maybe? There's a group of dogs. Yes, good one. Yeah, and they look like they have sticks or spears, so maybe they've been out hunting and they're on their way back. Yes, exactly. They've been in a hunting expedition. Yeah. Then down a bit further away on the right-hand side, we can see uh, what looks like ice rinks. People are skating maybe on mm -hmm. the ice. And I see there's maybe a church in the background. And then later, further in the background, we see the landscape of the neighboring farmland, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's something else on the left. Yeah, I'm looking at a, is that a pub or something? Yes, it's an, it's an inn, actually. An inn, right. Yeah. But the sign is falling off. Then you yes, exactly. Sign. But it, it's matching with the theme of the painting a little bit. We will get to that. Okay. When you look at the hunters, what do you see? How do they look? Hunters and the dogs. Do they, uh, I guess if you're asking whether they look tired. Mm -hmm. so and how do you understand that they're tired? All the dogs have their heads down. Yes. So I guess they've been maybe running around and trying to find food. Mm -hmm. the hunt, the have hunters, they? Have maybe, they found food? Or maybe not, no. Now you ask that, I didn't think What, did, what did they hunt, Tree? Really? Do you see it? Is it pheasants? Oh, fo there's a fox here. Yeah? Yes, a fox? There's, there's a little fox yeah. that is hanging at the back of one of the on hunters. Yeah, so they did get the catch. This but are they happy with that? Well, I can't Just one see single their faces, fox? I don't know. You don't, but still you can read their bodies, mm -hmm. body language. They look dejected. They look yeah, dejected. They, their heads are down, they're a little bit tired, they, they look quite very. Mm. And the dogs, the same actually. When you look at them, they're super tired. They've been out in, in the snow for quite long distance, most probably. Mm. All of them are very tired. This, this sign of weariness is, is both on the dogs, also on the hunters. I'm, I'm starting sorry. to think about famine now. Because you said it's oh, kind of positive, oh, maybe yeah. not very good. <laughs> I'm um, leading you to think like this. Yeah, I know where your level of trauma is quite... Uh... <laughs> you should, yeah, but I also choose the traumatic pieces, maybe. Especially. Oh. <laughs> but nice. that's, that's the fun about art, isn't it? To bring a trauma that's missing in your life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and when you look at to the left of the painting, what do you see? What are those people doing? Uh, are they in lighting the a inn? fire, maybe? Yes. It's they're, quite windy. They're preparing the inn, or maybe they're... Preparing food, to lighting a fire. To cook the food. Yeah, maybe, to cook the food, fun. maybe. Mm -hmm. And as you have noticed, the, even the sign of the inn is is actually broken. Yeah, it looks like it's going to fall off. You see that? Yeah, it's, it's going to fall off. And mm -hmm. this is also matching with the general atmosphere of, of the painting, actually. When you look at the painting, you see that the trees do not have leaves. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a quite harsh winter. And it's everywhere is covered with snow. And those poor hunters have been out in the snow and they couldn't have a proper catch. It's just a signal fox they got and they're uh, really wary. They have been super tired, exhausted. They're coming, coming home empty handed. Mm. So in, in think... general, you cannot, you cannot feel that on the left side of the painting, there's a positive vibe. We, we cannot really say On the left is negative, yeah. And more or less. But on the, on the right, it looks like they're having fun on the ice. Yes, look at them now. Oh, there's some what are they doing? hockey. Some yes, hockey they're playing hockey. What else? Oh, and curling. They're doing curling, yes. Yeah, I love the curling. sport. It's such a weird sport. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Perfect uh, for ice. And then they're uh, skating. I see skating. there are children skating they're in playing. lines. Are they, is that a hole in the ice? Are they fishing? Yeah, I guess maybe they're fishing as well. So, yeah. But the, the figures in the village are actually having fun, despite fun. The, the very cold, harsh winter. Mm. So you see two sides of, of life, more or less, we can say. Like mm -hmm. a little bit negative on one side, how winter is very harsh and how it affects people's lives in, in a negative way. And on the right hand side, people are having fun despite what's been going around with, with the harsh winter. And right hand side, foreground you can also see some people who mm -hmm. are actually working oh there's a water wheel yeah on the right there see that's frozen. yes and it's frozen yeah i guess that's, that's no surprise this mm -hmm. is a river maybe i guess which is frozen or, or yes lake. exactly it's a river um, I see it's a valley yeah 
somebody pulling somebody else on the yeah, dance. Like so more, a playful tone, you yeah. see, still. But there's a woman here carrying, oh, I guess woman, I don't know why. Uh -huh. uh, there's a person here carrying a, a bunch of sticks, I guess, firewood. Yes, maybe. yes, to create fire, to light a fire, probably. Crossing the bridge. Further, further along the way, just mm. next to the icy, icy river, we can say. Yeah, there's another person who's riding horses and just drawing a cartwheel. So mm -hmm. they're also carrying something. So we see that people are also working at the same time. Some of them are having fun, but they're some of them are still working to just to just survive in this to keep the village running. Exactly, harsh, mm -hmm. harsh times, harsh winter period. Yeah. So the story of this painting is not so deep at at first glance, at least. But when we look at the details, we will we will learn more about it. So then some historical context, maybe. Yeah, a little bit historical connection. We have some context. We have to, yes. I'm still expecting you to say something awful like famine or disease. But I'm uh, yeah, we're, we're, gonna crossed. Get, we're, we're gonna get there. It's not that awful. So there's nobody that's killed in this painting, at least. <laughs> the, I can first, say. the first one. First time ever. <laughs> um, so let's try to guess the movement of of this painting or the period of this painting. So that will also give us some more clues about the background and the history of it. So when you look at it, do you see uh, perspective effects, for example? Let's start with this. Is it order? Are, does it have a perspective? Does it have depth? There's foreground. I guess depth, yes, because there's like background. There's a very distant background and then like a okay. middle, like a mid pane and then a foreground. Yes. So I think there is perspective in that. I mean, you can see it looks quite realistic with the road going away. Uh -huh. um, but there are parts of it which feel a bit square in a way, too. Like down here, it feels a little bit, that's not... A little bit more flat, you but mean? Yeah, 2D, sort of. Could be. It has a kind of 2D feel, despite it being 3D, which is oh, hard yeah. to describe. Yeah, it's kind of. It doesn't have the linear perspective that we have seen on the other paintings. For With example, the in the vanishing point. Yeah, vanishing point that mm. we have seen in the Veronese, for example. That mm. we don't have. But still, there are perspective elements. For example, what separates the foreground from the midground? What is the element that gives you this sense of depth in the foreground? Do is it the it? cliff edge? Yes, the cliff edge. Right. And also look at the trees on the cliff. As uh -huh, you go, go down, down. The, mm -hmm. down the cliff, you see the trees go down and they get smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. The first tree you see closest to us is the biggest one. Right. The, the other one is getting a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. That gives you a slight effect of perspective, but not like we have seen in the south. Mm -hmm. So that, that I can reveal a little bit now, that, that, that comes from the north. Okay. That is the difference because they don't truly use the linear perspective that the south is using mm -hmm. at that period. So that's one thing. Other than this, do, you see, do you see a lot of details in the painting? Details? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, there are yes. quite a lot of small elements where it's quite sort of realistic in a way. Yes. You Like the person carrying the, the wood across the bridge. Exactly. That's something that could easily not have been there, but is there. So yes. it gives it a bit more of a sort of authentic feel. Exactly. And yeah. remember that you have you have zoomed in closer to the lake, to the frozen river in the middle, and you have seen people uh, engaging in very different activities. You could True. see those details. So it's a very, very detailed painting. There are also birds I see in the, yes. uh, on, in the river. Tiny stones you see here and there. For example, if you look at the mid-ground here, you see tiny... Uh, footprints, footprints mm -hmm. of a rabbit or right. a hare that yeah. they have missed probably just escaped the hunters and mm -hmm. disappeared. We even see such tiny minor details. And their footprints as well. Yeah, their the footprints so, as well. Mm -hmm. So all of these details and when you look at it in real time you just see how detailed it is with the branches for example on top. Mm -hmm. They are so tiny but they are shown with every precision with Tiny dots of snow on them, you yeah, see. Yeah, with the snow landing on the... That must be quite... On the branches. You, mm. you see everything. That is extremely detailed. And mm. that type of uh, detail you never see in the south. Because the southern painters at the time... This is a Renaissance painting, maybe I should review oh, that. Okay. This is a Renaissance painting, but it is from the north. So we, we call it Northern Renaissance. So Renaissance is pre-1600. Yes. Right. Wow. Exactly. And it looks quite modern to me. I think this could have been right. pretty... It, yeah. it has a sense. It yeah. has a sense of looking very modern, very even you can call it contemporary, right. you might think, because it, it is a landscape. Mm -hmm. And in a Renaissance painting, we expect to see more religious themes. For right. example, when you look at South, when you look at Italian art, you generally tend to see more 
religious topics, saints and Jesus. Scenes from the Bible. Yeah, scenes from the Bible. It's always like this. But in the north, the, the tradition is much different because the northern countries, or maybe when I say north, maybe I should explain a little bit where north is. Right. When we say north, we just divide Europe into two by the Alps. Okay. Northern of the Alps, which is today's Germany, today's... Netherlands and Belgium mm -hmm. or northern France is, is the North Europe, we can say. It's the northern Renaissance where we see northern Renaissance with the effect of more Protestant beliefs. Okay. And the south is the Italian art where we see the Italian Renaissance, the High Renaissance, the Venetian Renaissance. These are all southern ones. This painter actually comes from the Flemish lands, what we call Belgium today. Mm -hmm. He's a Flemish, Flemish painter. His name is Peter Bruegel, the Elder. Okay. We call him the Elder because there are four Brugels. Oh, wow. That's Peter. why we call them Peter Brugel the Elder, Jan Brugel the Elder, Peter Brugel the Younger. So it, it, it's a lot. Did you say two, Peter, <laughs> two Peters, two Jans? As far well as I remember, it's two Peters and two Jans. That's and why we call him. One. Yes, this mm -hmm. is the oldest one, Peter mm -hmm. Brugel the Elder. Mm -hmm. And he comes from the Northern Renaissance tradition. And very typical Northern Renaissance is focusing on extreme details which Italians never care about mm -hmm. because Italians care about how the poses look like, right. how to idealize them and make them look like Italian or Greek sculptures. Mm -hmm. And in the North, on the other hand, they just want to make figures look natural instead, not idealized. Okay. And in the North, it is more focusing on details. Mm -hmm. This is a typical genre painting actually. Genre painting, uh, as we have explained before in the stand, stand painting. I thought genre paintings were later. Yeah, already in the... No, genre, genre painting actually starts when, when Renaissance starts. Ah, okay. Actually, it's so in the North. Early ones too. Yes, mm. yes. Uh, but genre painting is developed more in the North mm -hmm. and came to Italy much later. During the Baroque time, it came to Italy more. Okay. So it's developed more in the North. So the reason for this is in the North, people were more... Uh, more equal, have equal socioeconomic status, we can say. So people who don't have so much money could also order art. Okay. In Italy, it's mostly people of religion, uh, the religious uh, elite, elite yeah, mm. that orders paintings, or the noble people who order paintings. But in the north, on the other hand, people who has mid-class level could order art. And mm. what they order is also things that they would like to see in their paintings, things that look like their lives. So that's why in the North we see a lot of genre painting which reflects ordinary people's daily lives. So there's no religious message in this? There is. There, there is, is though. Uh -huh. There is okay. though, because that's also, this is from the 1560s right. uh, of uh, northern countries. And then at the time there was also a religious revolution in the North. So mm -hmm. there is a religious message too. Okay. We will get to that. Uh, but in general, when you look at it, this is a genre painting, so it's just depicting a daily life in a northern village, mm -hmm. in a village in the Flemish lands. But one thing interest to, interesting to focus on here is the background, actually. When you the look sky. at this, no, the, the mountains. Oh, the mountains. Do you think mm -hmm. we can see that high mountains in Belgium of today? Oh, Are there any yeah, mountains no. in Belgium? No, I don't think so. No. It's quite flat down. No. Mm. These actually look like the Alps. Uh, mm. Super high, they have jagged peaks. Yeah. So for a Flemish painter to paint such mountains, where is it? Yeah. He must have seen them. Uh huh. They're very realistic. I haven't seen the answer. Yes, mm. exactly. And what Peter Bruegel did was he left the Flemish lands and he have crossed the Alps and has been to the Italy, has been to Italy and mm. came back. Mm -hmm. So he has seen the Alps. I mean, and, like an art pilgrimage. Or yeah, more or less. Yes, we can say. Mm. And that's why he knows how the Alps look like, and he adds these to his painting to create an extra sense of drama, to, to create a more dramatic atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Think that if he eliminated those mountains on the right, right background, mm -hmm. it would look very flat. That's true. He should have filled it with maybe some clouds, which would not make sense because the rest of the sky is clear. Right. So this, this just creates a more it's dynamic... It's good for the composition as well. Exactly. Yeah. It just goes from one roof... Yeah, From the roof of the inn, mm. inn, makes a peak, goes down as a valley and just climbs up again. Mm -hmm. That is the dynamism That's the of the balance painting. as well that we've talked about. Absolutely, yeah. exactly. So, so he's balancing figures, more Because normally the balance thing is about figures, right? All depends. But in the, in the north, they don't have the sense of balancing everything out. Okay. So the northern renaissance has a different 
different rules of doing things. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the Italians that try to balance the red left figure with the right figure. Mm -hmm. They just more focus on details okay. and more landscape details, for example. Yeah. Who asked for it? Oh yeah, uh, who ordered this painting? Yeah. Yes, it's a merchant. It's a Flemish merchant called Nicolas Jonghenning. I said the name right, well so I'm happy. I guess. <laughs> uh, as I have mentioned, it's a mid-class person who ordered this painting. It's a merchant. Right. So he wanted to have this painting to, to hang it. It's actually a series of paintings. He wanted to have those paintings to hang in his in his house in, in Antwerp. Probably he's gonna put this up in, in his not home in Antwerp, but probably outside of Antwerp. Right. It can be hunting hunting lodge, mm -hmm. some some summer house, something like that. Okay. So what he wants to see here is a classical theme that the northern artists do. It is representing the whole year by showing different activities of rural people, showing different months of the year. Mm -hmm. And this one is actually describing us, showing us, depicting us, the months of winter, right. December and January. So it's like a four seasons kind of... More or less. Series. In this in this one, there are six pieces. Okay. Uh, each one of them represents two months, uh, a two month period mm -hmm. all the year. Actually, you have them on your iPad. We can look at them and... We this see one? that, yes, this one. That's very different, it's much more grainy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's different because it's just showing a different season and the painter used different different landscapes. He didn't show the same same, same village, place, right. for example. Should I guess when this is? Uh, I believe this is... Autumn? Yeah, this is more autumn or early spring. It could be maybe February, still... February March. Hmm? More. The next one, for example. This looks like harvest. Yes, it's more harvest, so it's towards the end of end summer. of summer. Mm, okay. And the next one, for example, this uh, is again harvest, a little bit earlier harvest, maybe midsummer, so. midsummer, and you see that it's it's summer months. It's right. very clear sky. They're dealing with the crops now mm -hmm. at the same time. The next one, and this is the beginning of autumn, where the cattle is going back to the villages. They have taken the cattle out to to the meadows, for example, right. and they're taking them back. There's lots of summer and autumn months in this. You said there are six. But because months. because one of them, uh, the spring months, uh, the two spring months is missing today. Uh -huh. There should be six pieces. Missing, uh, but there, yeah, uh -huh. missing. We don't know where it is. It's uh -huh. lost. Oh, no. And there are five paintings today, and I believe three of them are in Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna, mm -hmm. including this one, which is called Hunters in the Snow. Okay. And they're in the same exhibition hall in in Kunsthistorisches Museum, if you go there, it's a big hall where you see a lot of Peter Bruegel, the elder painters, paintings. But you said there's a religious overtone here. Ah, yes, yeah, let's that? get to that. Good question. If they're showing the whole year, I'm trying to think if I can guess what it is. What could the religious message be here? Yeah. I don't know. The year, the, I don't know, the Christian year? Harvest is important, I think. But no, but think about more about the season. What could be the religious message, religious message when you're in message. winter? Uh, not truly that. No? But think that it's a very harsh winter here. Mm -hmm. The aim of the painter here is showing people that you still have to work and continue life and if you keep your faith that also helps faith, you right. uh, helps you get over this harsh, you'll, you'll harsh come winter. Yes, mm -hmm. you'll come through, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was uh, in 1563 and that year 63 and 64 had very absolute harsh winters we have the mm -hmm. records of this today okay. where they had famine where they had a lot of problems finding food mm -hmm. where people get really depressed suicide rates increased so it was very harsh winters they have gone through wow. and that was the time uh, when Brugger made this painting mm -hmm. so he actually referred to that period the the memories of the this this harsh winter and Put this through in his in his painting mm -hmm. to, to to tell people and to show people a way to get through that to, even if it's hard and harsh yes. outside then we still yes okay. it, it's not a very very clear religious message but it's 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 a little bit subtle it's in the background yeah it's not like a reference to a particular story from the bible or a particular no. maybe a parable but here it's talking more about yeah you know, how do you say that to the sustaining power of humanity maybe or in belief Yes, yeah. yes, a more indirect message. It's mm. not through some iconography where you see, oh, this is the, this is the Holy Spirit, this is Jesus. Not like this, but seeing it and getting the message 
yourself by looking at it and that kind of, you feel. That subtle message isn't that unusual for Renaissance? Would, it, wouldn't it be more obvious if there was a religious overtone? Uh, depends actually. The, the southern, the southern uh, painters, they just tend to use more iconography mm -hmm. in religious paintings, but we should also remember that that is a genre painting at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Or more or less even we can call it a landscape mm -hmm. because the effect of landscape here is much more than than any other painting and these kind of landscape paintings we didn't see in, in Italy for a very long time. They mm -hmm. didn't care about the landscape so much in Italy in the beginning of Renaissance. Okay. So uh, that's why, because it's a genre painting, we don't see a clear iconographic message either. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned earlier, this piece is one of my absolute favorites. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Vienna in Kunsthistorisches Museum, I spent a lot of time in front of this painting. It's, it seemed very beautiful to me. Why is I it so special say. for you? I believe it. I believe it just gives me this feelings of calm, mm -hmm. peace with all these cool colors, and I also believe I identify a little bit with the hunters, and I can. I feel like I have an emotional connection with them because they are so tired. They're a bit you disappointed. Spent so many years hunting, and not being able to <laughs> no, that I didn't. Do. <laughs> that I didn't do, but I still. I felt pity for them, probably, okay. or the harsh winter that are they're going to go through. It, it just passes through, maybe. I, I don't know. It touches my heart somehow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit hard to explain. Yeah. But the, the feeling it creates in me is, is, is special. This painting is famous not and important not just to me and to many people in the world. And it has been used as a reference in many art pieces, not only in... in art like paintings but also in cinema for example uh -huh. the the russian director film director tarkovsky has used it twice in two of his movies okay. in solaris and the mirror mm -hmm. and the danish director lars von trier he also used it in in the movie melancholia uh -huh. did you see i've it? seen that film yeah it's a, a really weird film the movie is called melancholia it's, it's a little bit weird movie but very weird you can understand you see this painting in the beginning when when the girl starts to feel melancholic mm -hmm. and then it's a good connection because this this painting truly brings feelings of melancholy mm -hmm. i can say so mm -hmm. I believe it's a it's a good way to use this this painting in that movie at least it connected so well with me. <laughs> That's and what a good I can moment say. For us to launch our next series, which is going to be about no, I'm joking about cinema, <laughs> cinema, yeah. movie analysis. Because... <laughs> this is the next topic we're going to ex excel in. Not with me, although I can always be an idiot. <laughs> no, me neither. I don't know that much. <laughs> That's all for today on Peter Brugel, the Elders, Hunters in the Snow. Thank you very much for watching us. Stick around for more moments when it's going to make me cry. <laughs> And depressed, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and stay tuned. Stay tuned for our talks for beginners. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.